Good morning, everyone. You can start um, putting in the comments where you're from, um, et cetera, say hi, whatever. I'm gonna let uh, a few more people roll in here before um, I actually get started on the March demo project. Hi, Lori, thanks for popping in today. So I am Reen Wilcoxon, owner of Embroidery Garden. And if you've been following, following me, you know that I've been doing monthly demos. I take some of my designs and I kind of want to inspire you to use them maybe in a different way, come up with something else. I see Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Janet, Pam, thanks for popping in here. Hi, Marsha. Nice to see you again. Um, so what I'm going to be showing you today is my bunny pillow. Now, I know the light is kind of bright in here. This is my brand new sewing studio, and it's really bright, and the white kind of washes out. Um, if you've been following me on my page, you have seen pictures of this, still pictures, and you can see how pretty it is. So what I actually did to create this, hi, Amy. What I actually did to create this was I used two of my design sets. So one of them are the Bunny Softies, and I got one laying right here. So the Bunny Softies is a set of several different sizes of these little bunnies, and they're meant to, you know, be stuffed. And some of the, this one, I skipped the face on. I just kind of thought that was a cute thing. On this side, I have, um, you know, where I stitched the face. Uh, the little pockets aren't included. This is uh, designed from one of my friends, Rhonda, from Stitch and Time Designs that I added on that I thought would look cute. But this is the Bunny Softy set. There's a four by four, five by seven, six by 10, I think seven by 12, and maybe eight by 12 sizes in this set. And they are meant to be, you know, stitched on fleece or cuddle or minky and stuffed. And, you know, give it as something for kids to love on or something. But my friend Caroline actually used the set and did something really different. Um, what she did was she took it and made a raw edge kind of applique, a really primitive, pretty looking um, uh, banner. She used my in the hoop blank tags and it was adorable. And that is what inspired me to do the pillow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can take one of the PES files from that set, the Buddy Softy set, and turn it into an SVG file to cut on your cutting machine. And then what I did was I actually took it into my software and I used PE Design. And I created easily within two steps, created a placement, and I have a blanket stitch. And later on, I'm gonna give you a close up look at this, but there's a beautiful blanket stitch that goes all the way around. Then I decorated it with my garden flower lace collection. I put some around the neck. I put the flowers here at the bottom. Hi, Rhonda, thank you for joining. I see Ginger, Michelle, um, you like the bunnies? Yeah, the bunnies have been very popular for me and they've been out for quite a while now. So. You know, stay tuned because I'm going to be, I got all kinds of notes here. I'm going to be offering a code uh, for um, a discount off on the Bunny Flossy set, the Garden Flower Lace Collection, which is also um, the designs I used in my jacket that I'll stand up and show you a little bit later. And the Garden Flower Lace Collection also comes with a thread kit. So these are dime threads. They are exquisite brand thread. You get 12 spools of thread. Plus in the back is whoops, is the design card that you can take out. And on the inside, it has a required serial number that you need to download the set. And then there is a software program sold by Dime that I'm an authorized retailer for that is called My Lace Maker. Now you do not have to have it to use the Garden Flower Lace Collection, but I thought I'd kind of throw it in with the special offer that I'm giving, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Pam. Ruthann, nice to see you. So kind of, let's get started here. And there are different ways of doing this, okay? The way that Caroline, I think, originally did it was she took a piece of fabric that was, you know, larger than the bunny shape, and 
this one happens to be the eight by 12 bunny that I used on it. I'm going to be showing you a little bit smaller one. I'm going to do it with the five by seven bunny. But she took it and basically laid down a piece of fabric, stitched the last two steps of the design. And so that really made the outline of the bunny. Then she took her scissors and trimmed maybe, I don't know if it was a quarter inch or a half inch away, all the way around to kind of frayed the edges. So that's one way you can do it. If you don't have any kind of software or, you know, anything like that, you can, you know, do the design like that. But the way that I did it, let me get some of this stuff out of my way, is, again, I said I got my notes here so I don't miss anything. So I want to tell you about two different ways to create an SVG file. And are there other software programs? Are there other ways of doing it? Yes. But I can only talk about the programs that I actually own and that I use. You know, I don't know about every software out there, so I can't, you know, tell you about it. But if you want to know um, more information on doing things like this, working with SVG files, cutting things out of vinyl, using your um, silhouette or your scan and cut to um, cut SVGs or, you know, applicate anything and learn all about vinyl, the different types, you know, there's um, HTV vinyl, there's adhesive vinyl, there's glitter, there's floss, there's all kinds of things. You should join my friend Stephanie's uh, Facebook group. And that is So Stephanie's, uh, So Stephanie Says Crafty Group. Now, if you downloaded the PDF file that I listed on Embroidered Arts Facebook page a few days ago, everything that I'm talking about today with links in it are on that PDF. And after this video is over, I'll go back to the Border Gardens Facebook page. I'll make another post. I'll be sure to put the link to that PDF. So if you didn't get it, you can get it, um, you know, today. That that will be up on the front of the page. Hi, Mertis. Thanks for coming. Hi, Caroline. Nice to see you. And thank you. Um, Caroline is mentioning my 20th year business anniversary. It's coming up next week. So starting tomorrow, I'm going to have, there's going to be five days of giveaways. And I'm going to be talking about that um, before I end this video. But I want to get going on how I actually did this. So um, one way that you can do it, um, I have Silhouette, the business edition of Silhouette. And that is the software for, you know, the Silhouette, the Cameo, you know, those kind of machines. But you have to have the business edition that works with SVG files. So on that program, all you do is you open it up your program, you click merge, and that's what brings in an embroidery file. So I opened the program, I clicked on merge, I brought in, let's say my five by seven bunny softy, and it comes up on the screen, and then you just open up the trace function, draw a box around that design, and click trace, outer edge, and then you have an SVG file. You can save it as an SVG file that's with the business edition. And then you can take it to your cutting machine that reads an SVG file and cut it. Um, Colleen says, happy anniversary to me. Thank you. I am very excited about that. And I'm going to be talking more about that in a little bit. Now, another way to do it, and I'm actually going to show you this one because I own, um, like I said, PE Design, the Brother Software. That's what I use to create my designs. And I have a scan and cut. So the Brother um, Machines and Brother Software, they kind of all work together, which is really nice. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to my scan and cut. I'm doing some really high tech stuff here today, so <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> all right. So I know there is some glare on the screen. It's very um, hard for me to get that off of there. My new sewing studio is great. It's got a lot of beautiful light coming in. It's hard to control, especially on a sunny day. So this is the screen of my scan and cut, and I'm using the SDX225. Um, again, if you want to know about other cutting machines and things, join Stephanie's group. She is like the guru of um, cutting machines, and she has virtual classes that she can you know, teach a lot of things. You could also YouTube, et cetera. So I have my PES file loaded onto a USB stick. So I'm going to go ahead and hit retrieve data, go to my USB stick, 
And I got some other little things in here, but here is the PES file. You might be able to see where it says PES, maybe you can't, but you can see the little bunny shape, hopefully. And this is the five by seven. I'm gonna work with a smaller size so it's easier to see. Again, I know there's glare on the screen. It's very hard to see. You can see the face and it does have the bunny outline going all the way around. If you touch this flower icon right here, it's going to, again, here's the bunny shape. It's got the outline and the little face. You can change the size of it if you want. I'm gonna leave it where it's at and I'm gonna hit okay. Now, what it did was it broke this down. So here's the original with the outline and the eyes. Here's just the outline and that's what I want. Go ahead and hit, uh, highlight that, hit OK. Again, you could, um, it's telling you the size. And if I wanted more than one on my mat, all I'd have to do is, you know, press plus to get, you know, it would load more than one on there. I'm only going to be doing one today, probably on the 12 by 12 mat. You might be able to get two of them on there. And then just hit set. And there's the bunny SVG. And I'll move the camera a little bit just so you can maybe see that outline a little bit better. Again, I apologize for the glare. That's something I'm going to be working on for my live. But I'm not going to do any kind of editing or add anything. So I'm just going to hit OK. Now it's asking me to please select what I want to do. And what I want to do is cut. And oops, I noticed I've been cutting vinyl, so my half cut is on. I need to turn that off. So just go into that little wrench and I need to scroll down and it says half cut. I want to turn that off. Hit OK. And I'm ready to start to cut. So I'm just going to move the camera back a little bit so you can see the whole scanning cut here. And let me grab all my stuff. All right, so here's the fabric. I'm going to do a chocolate bunny so that you can, um, you know, be able to see this a little bit better than using white fabric. What I have used on the back, I want some type of adhesive on the back, a fusible. So I've ironed on this. It's a new to me product that I recently got. It's from Dime and it's called Fuse Me. And, you know, I've been using it a little bit. It's what I used on the pillow. What I really like about this is it's, after you've ironed it on and you peel the paper off, it leaves the um, the fabric. It doesn't mess with the hand of the fabric. So it leaves it very soft. A lot of times if you use something like um, heat and bond light or something like that, it's going to make your applique stiff. Let me just show you. Um, this is a white one, again, that I cut out earlier. And it has the fusible on it. You can probably see it's shiny a little bit. But look how soft it is. It did not really change the hand of the fabric in it. It's leaving this applique very soft, which is what I like about this product. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my prepared fabric, put it down in the mat. I am not using the Brother fabric mat, okay? I am just using the regular, um, what do I got here? It looks like the regular standard mat. I have used the fabric mat in the past, let me give you one clue on that fabric mat. Do not ever put anything, adhesive, paper, sided stuff down on that fabric mat. And don't ask me how I know that, okay? Stephanie got a lot of uh, instant messages from me about, uh, about that when I did it. So what, I, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna place it fabric side up. And I have already got my mat loaded. And I'm just going to press it down onto my mat. And what I like to do is I like to use this washi tape. And again, Stephanie told me all about washi tape. Um, it's kind of a low-tack tape, very inexpensive. You can get it at dollar stores, etc. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape it down because I do not want this to move or shift on me in any way. And I like this tape, too, because I can tear it um, lengthwise in skinnier strips to put on the edge here. And I might just put one up along the top and along the bottom, and I'm going to be ready to cut. So all I did again was I ironed this um, 
fusible product onto the back side. There are instructions on it, how to, how to do that. Very simple. I've got my fabric down onto my mat. I've got my bunny design. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start. So what the machine is doing, it is actually um, determining the depth of what I have on there. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's going to get ready to cut the shape out. Now, I did not do a test cut. And Stephanie, would, <laughs> she would be all over me about not doing the test cut. Because you really should. And the machine has built-in um, circles square, triangle, et cetera, to do a test cut. So let's see how it cuts. It's asking me if I want to cut the next part. Remember, it came in and it showed, you know, the little face and et cetera. No, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm ready to take this off the mat and look how nice it cut. Okay, so let me get my, I had my little spatula around here. I'm just going to move the camera back a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. I'm going to unload my mat and move all of this out of the way. Close up my scan and cut because I'm done with that. And I'm going to change the camera and come back to me. All right. So that worked out pretty well. So that's how you can cut and make an SVG file from an embroidery design. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at some of the questions. A lot of them are kind of flying by here. Um, very hard for me to uh, read some of these, but I'll go back later on after the video ends and try and answer some of the questions. Uh, no, Ginger, I wasn't doing uh, using a 12 by 24. I'm using the 12 by 12 because the bunny I cut is just 5 by 7. The one I showed on the pillow is bigger. It's the 8 by 12. And I think I did use the um, the 24 mat because of the 12 inches long. The 12 by 12 mat, you really can't go 12 inches in length. So I did use the bigger mat. But I could also have resized it and brought it down to fit the 12 by 12 mat. Uh, Peggy, did I use the fabric blade? Let me check and see if, what blade I have in there. Um, no. <laughs> Actually, remember I said I had to turn the half cut off. I was using the vinyl blade. I was using the brand new auto vinyl blade. <laughs> My bad. But it works. They do have the fabric blade. I have that. Um, you know it's the fabric blade because it's gold colored at the tip. And the fabric mat is gold colored. So that's how you could tell um, that is the fabric one. So I've got my bunny cut out. Um, so now to make your pillow, and I've got something else over here. It's a little bit smaller to work with, so I can show you a little bit better. It's just a piece of fabric. I was going to make a pillow um, going this way, like a long pillow just to kind of sit up, stand up somewhere. And so a couple different ways you can do it now. Say you've got your bunny cut out, and like I said, I cut out a bigger one, and I cut out the smaller one. So let's just show this one because it's going to show up better on the camera. So what you can do, you peel the fusible off the back side, and of course, sometimes that gets to be the hardest part to get it started. I could take a pin and score it, but I got it now, I think. <laughs> All right, here it comes. So you'd peel off the um, paper backing. And I could, you know, find the center of this that I want to put it on, and I could fuse it down. I could take my machine, set up um, a sewing machine, set up for a decorative stitch, a uh, blanket stitch, or any of the decorative stitches, and stitch around it to secure it down. You know, you really, if you just wanted to fuse it on, it's a pillow, it's something that's not going to be washed a lot or anything, you can just do it like that. But if you wanted to um, do a decorative stitch, you could come back with your machine and do a de decorative stitch. Now on my pillow, and I'm going to try and show you this close up and tell you what I did on my pillow. I'm going to actually change to the other camera because I think I can get a closer up picture of it for you. 
All right, let me get the edge here. And, you know, maybe you can see this. I did use like a gray thread, but you can see this beautiful blanket stitch that I went around there and did. And this I did on the embroidery machine. And I'm going to tell you how I did that. I went all the way around it. It's perfectly spaced. Um, hits right on the edge, just like, you know, you want it to. And to do that, I used my software. Okay, I'm going to see if I can see a couple of questions. Um, Gail, a lot of possibilities have opened up for you. Yes, they have. Um, it's just your, you know, your imagination, what you can think of to do. Um, let's see. I thought I saw one from Bonnie come through. Uh, do I ever use hot fix? Yes, I've used hot fix before. Um, hot fix again. I like the product, but it's going to make the, um, your appetite be a little bit stiffer. I wanted to try this new dime product because like I said, it is new and, you know, some things that I read about it, this, um, fuse me would be really good to use, let's say you're making a large applique quilt and it's not going to change the hand of the fabric, like I said, it keeps it still nice and soft, like this one was cut with it on there and see how nice and soft the fabric is. Um, if you use a product like, I know Heat and Bond Light, it's gonna make those little appliques stiffer. Uh, this is just, Linda, this is just cotton fabric. It's kind of a tone on tone, white on white. It's got these really cute swirls in it. If you follow Embroidery Garden's Facebook page, which everybody should, and like it, um, you've probably seen the post of the pillow come up, and um, there's some close-ups of it, so you can really see the fabrics that I use. Rhonda put the um, link for the flowers. Thank you guys very much. I got great friends out there who um, are helping and are um, putting up some links for you. So, the, okay, so the one first way that you could do it, fuse it down and just use it like that. Whoops. Fuse it down, do a decorative stitch on your sewing machine around it, or you can do it like I did here, where I let the embroidery machine do it. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Jill. So I'm going to show you how I did that, and I'm going to do it in my software that I use, which is PE Design. I'm actually going to share my screen. So let me get this uh, my software brought up. There we go. All right. So like I said, I use PE Design, and like I said, are there other softwares you can use? Yes. Um, I believe that Dimes Pep and uh, software, and that's their Professional Embroidery Pro, will do this. This is my main software I use to create my designs. So this is what I'm going to show you. Okay, so we created our SVG file, right? When you create it, you can save that file. So I've saved it on my laptop here and I'm gonna go to import patterns. I'm gonna drop down to from vector image. Click that. And here is my bunny SVG that I saved for my bunny saucy five by seven um, design file, that PES file. So I'm gonna click on it. There's the preview of it. And I'm going to click open. So the cool thing about this software, you know, using this with um, PE design, and I'm using PE design 11, is that as soon as you click it, it makes it a running stitch. So this right now is a running stitch set at the default of 0 0.08. So that right there is my placement. Okay, so I would stitch that onto my fabric, put my bunny down, and let's say now I wanna stitch them down with a decorative stitch. So all I have to do is go to copy, paste. Let me go and pick a decorative line that I wanna do. And you're gonna see it comes up the same color as red. I need to change that color. And the reason I need to change the color is so the machine will stop. When you do a different color on a design, that's what makes the machine stop. So the first step is red. That lets me, after it stitches the first step, it allows me to um, take the hoop off the machine, place my bunny exactly where I need it to be, put it back on, 
and stitch the next step. Now this comes in again, I copied and pasted, so it's a running stitch, but I want to turn this into a decorative stitch. So let's go up to the running stitch, click on the little arrow, and you know, you can use a bunch of different things, but what I used was the blanket stitch, and then you got the EV stitch. They both are underneath the same file. But I want to use the blanket stitch, and notice as soon as I clicked it, it applied it. Now over here in the properties window, I can change the length of the stitch. I can make these little bites, and the bite is the stitch that goes to the inside of the hoop. I can make it longer. So let me just, I think I actually put mine at maybe 15. Yeah, on the big one I did. And you can see how it elongated that bite stitch, the stitch that goes to the inside. And I can even take it and I can um, put them further apart if I want to. But I'm just going to leave it like this. So I have my two steps. Um, very quickly, let's just watch it stitch. Let me slow it down a little bit. So I've got it, my fabric on the hoop on the machine. It stitches the running stitch placement line for me. Take it off, get my bunny in place, and then it's going to do the blanket stitch all the way around it. How easy is that? I mean, it's just um, quick, quick, quick. So let me get back over to um, me. And so that was really easy, wasn't it? Um, Bonnie, uh, again, you know, Brother Canvas, I do work with Canvas when I'm doing some, um, you know, vinyl projects and other things like that. Good question for Stephanie. And a good thing, uh, tutorial that Stephanie could probably show you. So again, to kind of go over what I just did, I would save that file that I just did, the running stitch and the decorative stitch. I would hoop this fabric. I would stitch that first step, the running stitch, gives me the placement. I would take my little bunny, put it inside that placement. I would take the iron and fuse it down so it stays in place, put it back on the machine, and the next step will do the blanket stitch going around it. And that's exactly how I did my bunny pillow. Very easy, very, um, very, very cute. I mean, I can see so many possibilities with this. So after I got done doing it, I wanted to decorate it. And I used my garden flower lace collection. And, you know, these little things at the neck, they are just um, some of the smaller elements of the design set. And some of those smaller elements in the design set or what I used on my jacket. And we just kind of stand up and, you know, I put some here along the side. I've got little flowers going all the way around on the hem. I've got little flowers on the cuff. Um, I put things up on the shoulders. I just made one freestanding lace flower into a pin, um, you know, to put here. And then the back, you can see other elements. And all I did was copy, paste, and create them large enough to fill in all the spaces and I put things up here on the shoulders. So these designs on the jacket are from the Garden Flower Lace Collection. Um, these here from the Garden Flower Lace Collection, they're all, all the lace is from the Garden Flower Lace Collection. So um, let's go over kind of how to stitch freestanding lace. Super duper simple. Um, so I always use two layers of water soluble stabilizer. Okay, so I've, I've hooped two layers, always. I don't care if I'm using, um, you know, just stitching out one little flower petal or something, I always use two layers. And this is not the plastic kind of uh, water soluble stabilizer. This is like that fabric-y woven type. Don't use the plastic type. Because after it stitches so much with those satin stitches and it penetrates so much, it will just fall right out of that satin stitch. All right, I'm kind of looking through some of the questions. You've got the lace uh, collection rows. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Michelle. I really like my jacket and it's the perfect time of year to wear it. It's spring in Indiana. So another tip for stitching freestanding lace. You're not supposed to, and this is a five by seven hoop, but you're not supposed to fill up a hoop with a bunch of freestanding lace. The problem becomes there are so many stitches because we all know freestanding lace is stitch intensive that once it starts stitching, it's, it's pushing on the stabilizer 
it's starting to pull it and make it a little wonky in here. And, you know, things are going to be off. So what I like to do, and this tip came from my friend Rhonda from stitchintimedesigns.com, is to use T-pens. And let me just get a T-pen out to um, kind of show you what a T-pen looks like. It looks like a T. And it's a very um, heavy pen. Okay, it's, it's very sturdy. It's a thick little pen, but it's shaped like a T, so that's why they call it a T-pen. So I take these T-pens, and after I have the stabilizer hooped, you insert them into the stabilizer. Um, let me, here's an area that I didn't do. So I'm just inserting it through the two layer, whoops, let me turn around, the two layers of stabilizer from the front side of the hoop and bringing the um, sharp point back through it. And if you can see this, and hopefully you can see it well, I might, might be better if I change to my other camera. I think you can see this well. So, <clears throat> excuse me. You, here's the T, and the T of the pin is crossing over the inner hoop and the outer hoop. So with it crossed over there, what it's doing is when you are stitching so many stitches on the stabilizer and it's pushing and pushing, this T pin, and they're going all the way around the hoop, is not letting the stabilizer move. It's keeping it very secure and um, stable. So those are the two big tips. You also are gonna use um, a bobbin wound with the same matching thread. And let me go ahead and change the camera because I think you might be able to see this a little bit better. So here's one of the pieces of the freestanding lace that I'm gonna use on um, the bunny that I just cut out. So the, the set has lots of little leaves. It has lots of little uh, decorative things. Um, this is the front of this little um, element here. So the back side looks just like the front side. And then here's a flower. And all, the flowers are dimensional in the set, meaning they are made out of more than one layer. This one I use variegated thread on, and I like to use dimes. Um, they call it melody. And there is a pink wave, there's a blue wave. The blue wave is actually um, what I use on all the flowers on my jacket. I use the denim blue wave. It's a variegated thread. And that's what I happen to use on this one. But after you make the uh, lace, so it comes out of the hoop, I just trim around it kind of close. I mean, certainly maybe like an eighth of an inch around, get that stabilizer off. Then I put it into a bowl of hot water and let it soak. The flowers, what I like to do is, and this would be, have been, you know, three different layers on this flower. I like to take them and while they're wet, I kind of smush them up in my hand. And the reason I do that is so they'll kind of crunch a little bit and it gives them a little bit of dimension. These are not totally flat. You don't want your flowers to be flat. You want them to have a lot of dimension to them. And here I can show you these up close. And you can see how much dimension they have. These are the flowers that are um, at the bottom of the bunny pillow. These are just um, some flat elements um, at the neck. And I just kind of put the two ends together. They're hidden underneath the bow. And I just tied a little bow out of grow grain ribbon and put it over the top to um, uh, hide where it connected. And then I just added a little greenery here, little leaves and things um, to kind of finish the pillow off. So let me come back and I want to talk about the codes that I have for you. And I'm going to kind of see if I can see some questions. Do you use the T-pen? If you use T-pens, does that enable you to do more than one design at a time? The whole idea of using the T-pens, Virginia, is so that if you load up a hoop full of freestanding lace, which really is not recommended to do, um, it's gonna keep the stabilizer um, nice and tight in here and keep it from shifting if you use the T-pens all the way around. Again, if you follow Embroidery Garden's Facebook page, um, you can see where I think I took the nine and a half by 14 inch brother hoop, filled it full of lace, 
put those pins in and took a picture of it after it was done stitching and posted it. And you cannot see one pucker or one movement in that stabilizer. Uh, Pam, buttons in the center of the flower. If you're talking about these flowers, no, those aren't buttons. Those are another element of the, um, of the garden flower lace collection. It has little centers in them. So after they're done um, stitching and you've dried them, you've rinsed them out, you've dried them, you hot glue them together. If you wanted to hand stitch them together, you could, but hot glue works for me. I hot glue them all together. Um, yeah, uh, Michelle has a good idea. You could put rhinestones on them. And I do have some samples of the garden flower lace collection I've stitched out that I have used rhinestones on. So let me, I, let me get around my notes here because I don't want to forget anything. Um, Ruthann, do you glue the flowers on or just pack them on? That's totally up to you. There is no right way or wrong way. You can do them however you want to. These, of course, on my jacket are all stitched on and they were stitched directly onto the jacket. Um, the ones on my pillow, I glued those on. I don't plan on washing my pillow or anything. Um, if you wanted to wash your pillow, pin them on. You know, from the inside, you could pin the, the flowers on if you wanted to. So I think I've gone over everything that I wanted to about how to do a project like this. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's just gorgeous. Uh, June's used cam snaps. Great idea to hold them together. Um, snowman, Don, that's a great idea. You can make snowman pillows or, I mean, you just don't have to make a pillow out of it. Use it as an applique on a shirt or a jacket or something. That would be, um, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm trying to look through some of the questions. Again, I'll go back and look through some more, but let me talk about the specials again, the, um, the code, I have a code, the code is March Demo, M-A-R-C-H-D-E-M-O, March Demo. It's gonna be valid until, only until uh, 329, which I think is Tuesday. Now, um, it'll end, 329 at midnight uh, Central Standard Time. And it's going to be 20% off the Bunny Softy Collection, 20% off the um, Garden Flower Lace Collection with just, you know, you, you can only, you can buy it either just the Garden Flower Lace Collection itself. Know that once you purchase it, you, please read the page that the, uh, the set is sold on. You have to have a serial number to download it. And that is something you are emailed separately. It does not appear in your download history or it appears in your download history, but you cannot download it from, um, from your download history. But you are emailed a serial number. So you can get just the Garden Flower Lace Collection. It's regularly $59.99. You can get the Garden Flower Lace Collection. Here's the design card and serial number in the bottom of the box with the 12 spools of thread. It's regularly um, $119.99, and it can be 20% off. You just choose it. When you go to the Garden Flower Lace uh, Collection page on embroideredgarden.com, there's a little drop-down menu, and it says Thread Kit. And you can choose yes if you want it, and um, then you'll get the thread kit. And I was going to include My Lace Maker, soft make, uh, My Lace Maker uh, software in this sale, too. It's regularly $499. Remember, it's software. Software is expensive. Um, and I'm going to probably do a March demo on that software at some point to show you how easy that is. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that SVG bunny that um, I saved. And if you could bring it into my Lace Maker software, in literally two clicks, I could turn this into freestanding lace. So I'll, I'm going to do that, and I'll probably do a demo, one of my monthly demos on that software, but it is $4.99. Uh, Dime does have a group, you know, you can ask questions about that in there. Um, so I'm going to just check um, and see if there are any questions. The, uh, the code, Janet, it doesn't matter. My site, it's not case sensitive. You can type it all capital letters, all small, some capital, some lowercase does not matter as long as it's March demo, all one word. And it's only on these um, 
one, two, three, four things I talked about. The Bunny Softies, the Garden Flower Lace Collection, Garden Flower Lace Collection with Thread, and the My Lace Maker software. Those are the only four things, and it's good until 329, uh, 21 at midnight, Central, Central Standard Time. So <clears throat> before I go, I do want to talk about next week is Embroidery Garden's 20th year anniversary in business. On Thursday, April 1st, and no foolin', I opened embroiderygarden.com. Um, and what I'm going to do is there's going to be a giveaway a day, and it's going to start tomorrow. I'm going to make a post. And what I'm going to do during, you know, next week is I'm going to make posts, and I'm going to kind of highlight and talk about some of the the big moments <clears throat> from Embroidery Garden over the past 20 years. And the giveaway for tomorrow is going to be, where did I put it? right here is this pack of sweet strips by Shannon Fabric. And this is a pack of cuddle fabric. They're 10 inches um, high. And there is one, two, three, four, five different ones. And I think there are they're like 60 inches long. You can make a blanket with it. You can use it to um, do designs, embroidery garden designs. And just to show you real quickly, I use some Shannon. This is like their um, thicker, you know, they have ones with longer pile, et cetera. And I use that for the wings as an applique. This one was made with that Cuddle 3. That's what's in this pack here. Um, so you can use it just like um, fabric. I did a blog post recently for Shannon Fabrics. If you go to Shannon Fabrics blog, you'll see that I did my little bunny treat holder using cuddle fabric and you know you can really use it on almost any in the hoop design there's just a few little tips and tricks you need to know and i go over that in that blog post so if you go to shannonfabrics.com or you know shannonfabrics.com slash blog and find their blog you can read um what, the post that i made and if you do please leave a, a comment there um, yes, you can watch this video later. It will be on Embroidery Garden's Facebook page. It'll stay there under videos. A couple other things I want to talk about real quick. Um, okay, so the, the um, anniversary starting tomorrow. This is the first giveaway. Then Monday morning, I'm going to make another post with another giveaway. Same thing on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So all those five days will be a brand new post on the page with a different giveaway. And just read the post, do whatever the post says to, um, you know, enter. Basically, it's just going to be the comment. And every day, if you comment on, you know, each one, you have a chance to win, you know, that prize too, that giveaway. And on Friday is when I'm going to announce um, the winners. All the winners will be announced on Friday. So that gives you time to, um, you know, go to the page and read it and see all the posts and see all the giveaways. Uh, thanks, Cindy, for the uh, congratulations. Um, Lenny, um, the snowballs, they are, uh, the, they've been very popular for me. The snowballs would look great in the cuddle snow fabric. Um, uh, let's see. So the uh, comments are kind of flying too quick for me, so I'll go back and read those over. A couple other things I want to talk about. So the anniversary, that's all next week. So come and join in Embroidery Garden's Facebook page. I will only talk about it on the page, not in the group or anything. Um, remember to join uh, So Stephanie's um, crafty group to learn all about vinyl, cutting, um, cutting machines, et cetera. Um, we have a couple of classes coming up, the virtual classes. Thank you to all those who have been in our virtual classes. The Easter um, little Mylar mini quilt, and hopefully you can kind of see if I move it around how cute and shiny it is. It's because the little chick with the eggs all have Mylar under them. This is the last class um, of the year for this design, and it's going to be a Wednesday on the 31st at 6 o'clock. You go to embroiderygarden.com, click on design um, classes. It actually comes up on the first page, but this class will be closing um, tomorrow or Monday. So if you want to get this adorable design, this is a collaboration between Rhonda of Stitch and Time Designs and Embroidery Garden. Um, get signed up for this class. 
Caroline's class um, doing the rope bowls. Um, her brand new class, the rope bowls with the um, handles. She's going to actually show you how to do the little handles in there. This is what I did after just kind of sitting in on her class with her. Um, I actually changed colors of thread on this one to make an accent strip. And this one, I know it's white. It's kind of washing out. You can see the handles. This class is on the 30th. That's Tuesday at 6 p.m. You can sign up for it at bordergarden.com. And one other class we have uh, coming next week is the notebook cover. This has been a very popular class. It's fully quilted. The um, little notebook is fully quilted, has a pocket for a pin. We show you how to make the pin match the fabric. And this class is coming up Wednesday the 31st at 7 Central Time. So sign up for this class. This requires an 8 by 12 hoop. Um, and Bird Garden educator Tammy um, will be teaching this class. The last thing, uh, last two things I want to talk about. Tuesday next week at 2 p.m. on Embroidered, um, well, it's not on Embroidered Arts page, but uh, Tuesday the 30th at 2 p.m., Embroidered Garden is hosting the Dime Edge to Edge virtual class. Um, you can sign up for that. You register for it. It is a free class. Uh, they're going to talk about um, edge to edge and how to do that and how to use the dime hoops. And there's going to be some really good pricing on dime products, the hoops, thread, all that kind of stuff that you need. That is um, the 30th, which that's Tuesday at 2 p.m. If you have registered for it, you will be getting a link. Um, they either send it out Tuesday morning or it could be Monday. I'm not sure, but you get a link to tune in and watch it. You can watch it for up to 48 hours after it ends and still get in on all of the pricing. And just announced um, April 6th at 3.30, I'll be with Barbara from All Brands talking all about my design center. And what I'm actually gonna do is I have this little pillow that um, I created and it's for a 10 by 10 hoop, but I'm gonna be showing you, and I know you, it's hard to see, there's some really pretty um, circle quilting all behind this letter R. There's quilting here going all the way around it. What I'm going to do is show you how to take this blank design. And in my design center, we're going to create a brand new outer border and inner border and bring in a built-in design. So that'll be with all brands on April 6th at 3.30 Central Time. All right. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed the March demo. And remember, I'll be doing this every month. Um, if you have any ideas that, you know, you want to um, see me do for the next demo or, you know, one later on this year, just let me know. Um, I see some, did the notebook, oh, you did the notebook when um, I was doing a in-person class. Yes, it is the notebook from the in-person class. I changed it just a tiny bit for the virtual class. Um, yeah, beautiful font on there. That's built in off of my machine that's on the Luminaire. Um, I will go back and try and answer some of these questions, but I think I'm going to let you all go for now. And remember to like and follow Embroidery Garden's Facebook page so you can get in on all those giveaways happening on Embroidery Garden's 20th year anniversary week spectacular next week. So. Thanks for joining me. I'll come back and answer questions and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.